Hello, in this video tutorial, I will give you an overview of my recent research project, an interface between differential equation and computer science. Before I start this video tutorial, I would like to thank my undergraduate student Jingyi Shaw for his contribution to this research project and also one of my collaborator Fazil Hadidi Fard for his analytical work in this project. This research is funded by Hackman Summer Grant of Frankel Martian College, so we also thanks them for their support. Today I will talk about a differential equation computer science and their interplay to solve real world problem. The mathematical tool I will introduce in this talks are derivatives, linear algebra, approximation, C0 semigroup theory, and computer science. I organize my talk into four sessions. In the first two sessions, I will talk about uh, exponential growth model and also discuss how to calculate the derivative of a given data set. The goal of first two sessions is to introduce the tool and techniques which we need in our main project, that is solving wave type of equation by a computer simulation. I will wrap up my talk today with some conclusion and future work we need in this direction. Now let's first talk about the exponential growth model. In the exponential growth model, the population grow over time as a result of the number of individuals are available to reproduce without regards to resource limit. The exponential growth model can be formulated mathematically by this differential equation which is dy over dt is equal to k times y. Here y represent the number of individuals present in the society at a given time. k is a constant which represent the rate of increase and y0 is equal to y sub 0 is the initial population in the society. So next we would like to solve this differential equation and find the values of y in term of t. There are basically two techniques to solve a differential equation. The one is an analytical technique in which we will use the tools from the continuous mathematics such as the integration and find the solution of this differential equation explicitly. In particular for this differential equation if I separate the variable of this differential equation first that is by multiplying the dt on both sides and moving the y on the other side I will get 1 over y dy is equal to k times dt. And now if I integrate on both sides and uh, then simplify I will get the exact solution of this differential equation. The exact solution of this differential equation is y of t is equal to y of 0 e to the power kt. In this video tutorial this is not our goal to solve the differential equation by analytically method. The goal of this video tutorial is to show you how to solve this differential equation by using a computer. First we notice that the problem we have that is dy over dt is equal to k times y. This is a continuous problem and computer do not take continuous input. So in order to feed this problem to a computer we must need to discretize this problem. To move on to that, first I will look into this term which is a dy over dt and we know that the mathematical definition of this term is as h approaches to 0 of the quotient y of t plus h minus yt whole thing is divided by h. If I take h to be very small, I can uh, approximate this term by the quotient y of t plus h minus y of t whole thing is divided by h. So replacing the dy over dt by this quotient will convert my continuous problem into a discrete problem. This process of replacing the continuous term by some discrete term is known as discretization of the problem in numerical analysis language. Now let's take an example and have more detailed understanding of the discretization process. Here I have the example of a exponential model dy over dt is equal to 2y and y of 0 is equal to 1. 
that is the rate of increase of the population is 2 unit and the initial population in this society is 1 unit. To discretize this problem, I will replace this continuous term dy over dt by its approximate value y of t plus h minus y of t and whole thing is divided by h and this will be is equal to 2 times y of t. Now I will move the h on other side and also the y of t to find the values of y of t plus h in term of y of t. Now if I replace the values of t is equal to 0, I will get the values of y of h in term of y of 0 and the value of y of 0 is given in the statement. And if I replace the value of t is equal to h, I will get the values of y of 2h and this is equal to 2h plus 1 y of h and the y of h I already calculated in my previous step. Similarly, if we continue in this fashion, we can calculate the values of y n of h by plugging the values of t n minus 1 time h. This gives us y's of n h in term of y of n minus 1 time h. Now if I denote y of n h by y's of n, I can write these n linear equation into a recurrence relation that is y of n plus 1 is equal to 2h plus 1 y of n where y of 0 is equal to 1 and n vary from 0, 1, 2 and so on. Now I will summarize the discussion of our previous slide. In the previous slide, we had a continuous problem dy over dt is equal to 2y and y of 0 is equal to 1. And by replacing the continuous term dy over dt by its approximate value, we was able to discretize the problem. The discrete version of the problem is y of n plus 1 is equal to 2h plus 1 y of n. And we can use a computer language to solve this problem. Here I have some simple code for the solution of this problem that are written in MATLAB. And if I run this code, I will get the y values of my solution. And if I plot these y value of the solution, I can get the graph of my solution. So here is the graph of the approximate solution of our exponential growth model. This whole discussion shows us how we can use a computer language to find the solution to our exponential growth model. Now let's switch our gear to a different problem. This time I have a discrete data set and I would like to calculate some of its continuous attribute such as derivative. The source of this data set is New York time and this data set is the spread of recent COVID infection in US. The first row of this data set represent the day count, the second row represent the date and the third row represent the total number of cases on a given day. Here is also the graph of uh, this data set which can give us a little better visualization what is happening in the infection. Even to get more information about this infection, we would like to know what is the rate of change of this infection or in other words, what is the derivative of this data set. To calculate the derivative of the data set, we will use the formula from data science. The derivative in the data science is just uh, uh, some row operation. And in fact, this row operation is if you would like to calculate the derivative of the nth row, you will take the n plus 1 row and it subtract from the nth row and then you also divide by h which is the difference of day count. So if I use this formula on the first row, the derivative of the first row will be 3 and we will calculate it by subtracting the second row 
which is 11 from the first row the value of the first row is 8 so then whole thing is divided by the difference of the day count which is a 2 minus 1 so this give us the value 3 which is the derivative of the first row and similarly we can perform this row operation to calculate the derivative of the entire data set actually there is another way to perform these row operation in our linear Jabra class we learn to construct a matrix which can perform the required row operation the matrix which can perform this row operation is a uh, twice diagonal matrix whose main diagonal entries are all negative 1 and one upper diagonal entry they are all 1. So if I multiply this matrix to my given data set it will compute the derivative of my data set. And now I can plot the graph of my derivative which is the rate of infection. So here is the graph of the rate of infection and now we can have more information how the infection was spreading. And as we can see that in the month of November and December the rate of the infection was higher than any other month of the year. Now let's summarize this discussion and find out what we can take away from it. The takeaway from this discussion is a continuous operator d over dx is approximately is equal to a discrete matrix operator 1 over h time a twice diagonal matrix whose all the diagonal entries are negative 1 and the upper diagonal entry they are all 1. Actually we can extend this result to the second order derivative since we know that the second order derivative is the derivative of the derivative therefore on the discrete side it will be the multiplication of 1 over h time d by 1 over h time d and if I perform this multiplication I will get 1 over h square times a tridiagonal matrix whose all the main diagonal entries are negative 2 and 1 upper and 1 lower diagonal these entries are all 1. Actually we can make these result of rigor by using the approximation C0 semigroup theory. By using the C0 semigroup theory we can prove this continuous operator d square over dx square continuously converge to this discrete operator 1 over h square time a as n goes to infinity. Now having this result in hand we can discuss the motion of waves. We know that the motion of the wave is in our everyday life for example sound wave, water wave, electromagnetic wave these are some well known phenomena of wave motion. Physicists and mathematician describe the motion of wave by second order partial differential equation which is the second order partial derivative of u with respect to time is equal to the second order partial derivative of u with respect to x and the force gamma which is proportional to the velocity of the motion. Our main goal in this presentation is to find the solution of this partial differential equation by using some computer simulation. So to discretize this problem I replace the second order partial derivative with respect to x by this discrete matrix operator which I showed you in the previous slide. So this will discretize my problem in the space variable and I will get a second order ordinary differential equation in time. Now I can use some tool from the ordinary differential equation to reduce the order of this differential equation. So if I make the change of variable by this variable v which is a vector whose n minus 1 entries are u and the last n minus 1 entries are the derivative of u. So this change of variable reduce the order of my differential equation and I will get a ordinary differential equation in v dv over dt is equal to m time v. Notice this differential equation is very similar to the exponential growth model. However, there is a one major difference here the constant of the differential equation which is m here 
this is not a real number this is a matrix and in the exponential growth model that constant was a real number now formally i can assume m is a real number and by using the method of separation of variable we can solve this differential equation the solution to that differential equation is v of t is equal to e to the power mt v of 0 now observe if i replace the variable t by t plus k in the solution i will get e to the power t plus k and v sub 0 and i can write e to the power m t plus k as e to the power m k time e to the power m t and i can replace this quantity from my solution again and i will get this term which is e to the power m k times v sub t or in conclusion i have this recurrence relation in v t plus k and v sub t and now i can use some computer language to find the solution to this recurrence relation as we did in the exponential growth model however there is a one issue here how to approximate the values of e to the power m k one can say that we can approximate this value by a Taylor series approximation. But when we use the Taylor series approximation, we did not get very promising result. And then we find another way of approximating this function and that is Pate approximation. Pate is a approximation of exponential function by a rational function and each different Pate approximation gave us a different numerical scheme. So this pad approximation not just give us one numerical scheme, this give us a class of numerical scheme. Next I will give you the numerical performance of this scheme. So to show the numerical performance, I will pick FD10 and FD11. And I will compare my numerical scheme with the two traditional scheme. The one is explicit final difference scheme and the another one is implicit finite difference scheme so here is the numerical comparison on this graph here the y axis represent the absolute error x axis represent the time from 0 to 10 and these are the graph of my solution at a fixed value of x which is pi by 2 this graph shows that absolute error in our FD11 is significant small than the traditional implicit finite difference scheme. To see the quantitative difference we also have the table and as you can see our FD11 improved the traditional implicit finite difference scheme by two digit. Now let me give you the summary of my presentation. In this presentation, I aim to show you an interface between differential equation and computer science. In particularly, we show derivative can also be approximated by matrices and using this fact, we develop a class of numerical scheme. In conclusion, we find a class of numerical scheme for damped wave type equation. These schemes are easy to code. They are stable and produce a reasonable approximate solution. In our current and future work, we will investigate whether the fraction type of derivative also can be approximated by discrete matrix operator. And using these results, we can solve them fractional wave type equation. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.